Welcome back to Universio. Today, the origin of elements. Elements are the basic building block of matter. The stuff around us is all made up of elements. Basic elements can be combined to form compounds, but they cannot themselves be manufactured out of something else. So the question is, where did these elements come from? The Big Bang created our universe 13.7 billion years ago. It basically just created hydrogen and a little bit of helium. We basically only had the first two elements of the periodic table. The universe kept expanding after the Big Bang, but gravity was causing hydrogen particles to come together. They moved faster and faster under the influence of gravity. The faster they traveled, the more energy they gained, and the hotter they became. As the temperature increased, hydrogen became a plasma, which formed the first star. Nuclear fusion took place in the core of the star, where temperatures and pressures are high enough to initiate the process. The process started with hydrogen's atoms. Their electrons got enough energy that they could escape from the atoms, which left protons behind. Some of the protons could turn into neutrons with the help of the weak force. By various processes, two protons and two neutrons eventually form the nucleus of a helium element. Normally, it would not be possible for two protons and two neutrons to come together to form a helium nucleus because the two protons would repel one another. But the core of stars was so hot, and particles therefore have sufficient energy that they can overcome the Coulomb repulsion force and fuse together. The process of converting hydrogen into helium releases energy. This is because the mass of two protons and two neutrons is slightly greater than the mass of the helium nucleus. The mass difference is converted into energy by Einstein's famous formula. The released energy creates a pressure, which is sufficient to balance the gravitational forces. While the nuclear fusion process is working, gravity is held and the star maintains its size. This is what happens for pretty much the entire duration of their life. For example, our own sun is 5 billion years old. It still has another 5 billion years to go. Throughout that time, it is steadily converting hydrogen into helium. At some point, all the hydrogen in the core of a star has been converted into helium. The outer layers may still contain a substantial amount of hydrogen, but the main fusion process will stop. Once the fusion process in the core has stopped, gravity takes over again, and the star begins to contract. As it does so, its temperature increases even further, and now the helium in the core has sufficient energy to fuse, which makes higher elements in the periodic table. Depending how big and how hot the star is, the fusion process is capable of manufacturing elements by fusion all the way up to iron, which has 26 protons in its nucleus. Once stars have got to a point where their core is made of iron, the fusion process stops. Gravity once again dominates. The star quickly begins to collapse. What happens next? Now, it depends on the size of the star. For small stars, the gravitational collapse will be stopped by a process called Pauli exclusion principle. Two electrons cannot occupy the same energy state at the same time. That resistance by electrons to being in the same state is sufficient to stop gravity from causing any further collapse of the star. The fusion process has ended, and the star will continue to glow for many billions of years, known as a white dwarf. Eventually, it will cool down and fade from view. But for bigger stars, gravity is sufficient to overcome the effects of the Pauli exclusion principle. The star's outer surfaces are collapsing onto a hugely energetic inner core. This results in a cataclysmic explosion of astronomical proportions, known as a supernova. In a few days, more energy is released from that star than from a whole galaxy. It is during this period that elements all the way up to uranium can be manufactured. The core of the star continues to contract under the forces of gravity. Atoms in the star are crushed. Electrons and protons are forced together to make neutrons. The neutrons are then squashed together. The star becomes a neutron star. The star is probably only the size of a city and it rotates very quickly. One teaspoonful of the material on a neutron star would weigh 500 million tons. 
At this point, a different version of the Pauli exclusion principle comes into play. This stops two neutrons from being in the same state. That will stop the gravitational collapse, unless the star is so massive that gravity can even overcome this one last barrier. If it does so, there is no known physics that can stop the star from continually contracting, becoming ever more dense until it becomes a black hole. A black hole is known as a singularity because it has no spatial dimensions. The entire mass of a star is condensed into a space which is infinitesimally small. But what about the remnants of the supernova that have been exploded into space? Gravity takes over again and begins to draw them together until they form the basis of another star and the whole process can start all over again. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, please subscribe to this channel.